this is the most important sentence with regards to anything that you might learn today with regards to like maintaining a community. Think value first. Don't even think about monetization and it will happen later. But to everybody that just joined right now, again, uh, briefly put, we're discussing the aspect of building online communities in 2021 for both B2B and B2C businesses. Personally speaking, I feel that online communities are some of the strongest assets that you can have in 2021 plus as a business owner. If you own a community, you own your own distribution channel, you can post whatever you want, whenever you want, and you can network whenever you want and however you want, as opposed to renting space in somebody else's community, as opposed to renting space on a social media platform through ad spend, etc. CPMs are high, right? Facebook isn't as cheap as it used to be before. And uh, <laughs> the reason as to why I'm saying this is because I'm uh, like for the past two weeks now, I've been spending literally day and night, uh, like poor sleeping patterns, etc. trying to work out some virality growth hack for my Facebook ads, for my Quora ads and my LinkedIn ads. Um, so I, I can honestly attest to the fact that CPMs are high. And unless you have some crazy out of the box growth hacking strategy out there, it's pretty competitive because you're competing with your, you're, you're, you're out trying to outbid another, I don't even know, like millions of businesses, not even thousands, millions of businesses that are all trying to rent space. Right? So essentially if you own a community, you own your target markets attention, and you're able to utilize it, whether it's for monetization, whether it's for networking, etc. So there's a couple of key points. Um, a couple. Of so for everybody that's unaware, uh, my name is Kiroko Stalis. I run Inside Insight and the Growth Hacking Bootcamp. Uh, a couple of you might have come might have come through the Growth Hacker Inc. groups or any of the other groups. If you've come from the Growth Hacker Inc. groups, let me just check my WhatsApp. Maybe it's something with regards to my audio and then I'll mute from there. If you guys have come from the Growth Hacker Inc. groups, then you know that I'm the person who basically built out those groups. And these groups are give or take two years old right now. And slowly we're building group by group, basically. So if you're from Growth Hackers Inc. 1, you should know that there's another five different Growth Hacker groups. Now, the Growth Hacker groups are basically groups that I've built two years ago, back like as soon as I stepped into Growth Hacking. Let me, very good. I love it. So somebody's already drawing on the screen and it's totally normal. So if we can just turn off the annotation on the shared content, that's done. Perfect. So the Growth Hacker Inc. groups are basically groups that I built two years ago when I decided I want to learn growth hacking and see how it's done. Now, if you remove all the gimmicks from growth hacking, growth hacking is essentially low cost, highly effective marketing. I know everybody's like, you know, I'm a growth hacker. I do growth hacking, this and that, etc. Like it isn't as grandiose as it seems. It's just low cost, highly effective marketing through, done throughout like a wide array of industries. You can do it. In, you can growth hack real estate. You can growth hack your Facebook ads campaign. You can growth hack your LinkedIn outreaches. You can growth hack anything. So back when I literally had no idea with regards to growth hacking, I personally thought, you know, what's the best way to learn? Um, sure, Ahmed, no problem. I forgive you. Uh, usually I wait for somebody to write on the screen, uh, like when I share and then it like immediately reminds me to turn off the feature for the crowd. Cause yeah, sometimes, you know, you might have like penises and it can get a little wild, uh, turn into a bit of a fiasco, but back to the, uh, <laughs> back to the growth hacking aspect. So I thought, what's the best way to learn growth hacking? And then I thought, why not build a community with experienced growth hackers, right? Because I couldn't find an existing one so that I can ask questions and basically learn from them. And so I did. I set up a LinkedIn outreach of, I think it was one account. I, I just automated my own personal account, uh, Kirill Cristales. Um, and I basically targeted growth hackers saying, I'm building a community of experienced growth hackers and I think you'd be perfect for it. Over time, uh, you know, I started asking questions, I started learning, but over time I started answering more questions than I was asking. And that's when I basically said, okay, all right, maybe we can develop a bit of a thought leadership position in this whole thing. And I started creating content to basically back it up. As I started creating content, the group started growing, the content started getting a lot more viewers, etc., And it basically turned into its own flywheel effect. So 
the agency inside insight is dependent upon the communities essentially so for those that aren't aware it's inside insight.it and it's a b2b growth hacking agency we deal primarily with b2b clients for uh performance-based services so performance-based lead generation etc and then on the flip side i also have the growth hacking bootcamp now the reason as to why the growth hacking bootcamp was created was because as I started answering more questions as opposed to asking them, right? A lot of the questions became repetitive. They, 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 they were formulated along the lines of, you know, how do I automate my LinkedIn account? How do I set up ads? How do I do this? How do I do a cold email outreach, et cetera. So instead of <laughs> answering these questions one by one on a daily basis, what I basically did was, was I just packaged the answers in video form. I created a uh, info product around it, hence the Growth Hacking Bootcamp. And people can join, they can pay, they can, it's like 149 per three months. So it's, I, I try to keep it super, super cheap because for me, it's more of a memory depository. So whenever I come across a new growth hack, I record it and I post it there for growth hackers that are in the bootcamp to basically take advantage of and for me to revert to, right? So for me to check out like two to three months later when I forgot about it to see what type of strategy I can basically employ for whatever I'm doing. And um all of this is thanks to the community. So the Growth Hacking Bootcamp is growing. Uh, we're growing in user base, we're growing in subscribers, etc. The content on Inside Insight, and I'll explain a lot more with regards to my content marketing strategy a little bit later on, but the content is growing, right? And the agency is also growing because a lot of our clients come directly from the community itself because you know they see that we're not a one-stop shop that just opened up for a month and is gonna disappear the next. They, they see that we've been around for a year and a half, two years, etc., which basically speaks for itself. And if they ever need any growth hacking services, if they ever need any lead generation services, they come directly to us because they engage with us on a daily basis. So it's it's alike to a content marketing strategy. Um, the reason as to why I'm saying this though is to not boast about you know our achievements and what we've done, et cetera. It's to basically shed light on the fact that these are results that you can basically replicate for yourself, regardless of the industry that you're in. If you're in B2B, the results will be much better. If you're in B2C, you can also replicate them, but the strategies that you need in order to funnel traffic directly to your community are a little bit different. They're more mass market as opposed to B2B where it's more, you know, it's more a much more targeted approach, a well thought out one. And if you have, let's say 50 people in your community, this can basically change the, like change the course of your year as opposed to B2C where it's low margin, you're selling low margin products that are direct to consumer, right? And you need volume in order to make a difference within your business. But essentially, uh, how do I, I'm trying to see if I can <laughs> basically delete the yellow line that uh, Ahmad posted. Let's just annotate and we'll kick it off from there. So I think it's a razor should be bomb done so uh moving on to the first slide now as i mentioned to everybody as well the uh, like as soon as you join you're automatically muted but there will be a q a section towards the end where you can ask any question etc engage add any input but to kick it off the purpose of online community. So starting off with the why aspect, right? Why would you want to go ahead and allocate resources and time in order to build an online community? The biggest reason, and you'll find me repeating this over and over again, is if you own your online community, you own your distribution channel. Now this distribution channel can of course serve as a distribution channel for content. It can serve as a distribution channel for uh, promotions. It can serve as a grounds for networking as well. When I say distribution channel, right, in marketing, what I mean by this is Facebook is a social media platform and a distribution channel. If you have a content marketing strategy, you can distribute your content directly on Facebook. Twitter is also a distribution channel. You can distribute your content on Twitter and your promotions on Twitter. Reddit, same thing, etc. If you own your own community, you basically own that distribution channel from the aspect of you can post whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want, and you can network in whatever style that you want, as opposed to basically borrowing somebody else's space. So essentially, as opposed to, you know, joining somebody else's distribution channel, somebody else's group, right? And then checking if post approval is on, like crafting something that's, you know, it's not too salesy, it's not too pushy. And at the same time, it's providing value. If you own your distribution channel, you don't need to think about this. 
you you can i mean it wouldn't be a good idea but you can literally send a note essentially people will leave your group but you own your distribution channel um and i just personally find it super important especially in today's day and age where attention is everything because if you own your distribution channel you own the people's attention you own the attention of the community right and then you're basically able to provide value guide their attention towards a certain offer and they'll basically act on it if they see value in it on the aspect of how can this translate to revenue right so sunny just joined as well still have people joining how can a community translate to revenue all this depends upon how you're able to basically structure your community and your offer and i'll give you two examples right now let's say you own a uh, solar company for example because a couple of people are in the real estate industry if you own a solar company and when i say solar i'm talking about a company that basically supplies houses with uh, solar tech essentially to basically take advantage of renewable energy so energy from the sun etc pretty straightforward if you own a solar company one of the communities that you can basically build out is a community of real estate agents within your region these real estate agents essentially will serve the purpose of potentially becoming channel partners for your company so i'll just slow down and i'll state that once again because uh just for the sake of simplicity you own a solar company you want to build an online community build this online community with real estate agents that can serve as channel partners and to simplify channel partners even more i'd basically call them like affiliates or you know um i wouldn't call them multi-level marketers but i'd call them like affiliates slash introducers the reason is as a solar company it's pretty expensive to go direct to consumer right but it's cheaper to essentially go to real estate agents and then these real estate agents take your product direct to consumers so d2c so what you do in that case is you'd basically build a whatsapp group of real estate agents within your region supply them with content of course so have an active content marketing strategy maintain a couple of weekly webinars right with regards to how they can not push but essentially adopt solar within their like sales strategy within their sales cycle what the benefits are how much money they can make of course as real estate agents with regards to commissions and that's it it's super simple strategy right and a whatsapp group can essentially serve as an asset to your business and your marketing strategy, as well as your sales strategy. Because instead of spending and going crazy on CPMs on Facebook in order to go to direct to consumer, you essentially have your agents within your group that view you as a thought leader and trust you above all because they engage with you on a daily basis and they're able to basically push your product forward from there. That's one idea. On the flip side as well, and I think it's an example that I've mentioned in a previous webinar that I ran two weeks ago. Let's say you're an accounting firm, for example, another B2B example, but let's say you're an accounting firm and you basically help businesses with their accounting. Create a community. It can be on WhatsApp, it can be on Facebook, it can be on whatever channel you like. And essentially fill it up with business owners that are interested in you know, learning more about accounting or just making sure that their accounting is like in check and create content with best tips and practices for accounting in 2021. So that's the bloodline of the community, quote unquote, on the flip side, create a webinar as well weekly, and then create an info product, right? Teaching them essentially, like if they're a DIY business owner that wants to apply these skills and the knowledge on their own business themselves create an info product sort of like the growth hacking bootcamp and then on the flip side if they're looking for a done for you solution have an agency as well so that's how the community essentially translates to revenue so the more you scale your community the more you scale your revenue etc and it becomes directly cross correlated to the bottom line of your businesses the final question of course is why not just outreach to within existing communities and it all reverts back to the initial question of what's the like why is it important to own your own distribution channels if you join a bunch of communities right now on facebook you need to check if post approval is on you need to check if you can post if it's okay if it's etc so on and so forth and it just becomes a hassle and at some point you're just going to think why don't i just create my own space where people trust me I essentially own the community, etc. And it just works out so much better as opposed to joining other people's groups, renting space, trying to like make sure that you're not too pushy, not too promotional, etc. Like, because I've done both. And for those that are aware and unaware, I even have a 
YouTube video where I show people how to basically hijack slash quote unquote steal other people's Facebook groups, not in a hyper invasive way, but like in a well thought out way with some cloaking, some uh, etc. more of a growth hack as opposed to anything. And what you do is, is you join a group, you scrape the list, and then you basically auto DM people directly with, um, with Facebook Messenger, telling them, hey, by the way, I saw that you're in this group. We're also launching another one on WhatsApp. Feel free to join by this link. So that's, uh, that's uh, one way. Farouk, I see you asked the question. I'll answer it super shortly. And as per the images as well, this is the initial Growth Hackers Inc. group. So for those that know, for those that don't know, there's five of them right now. This one started two years ago. And this is Growth Hackers Inc. one. Then we have two, three, four, and five. And then on the flip side as well, I also have a Facebook group. So this is with 1.1K members, et cetera. Now, both of these groups have translated into the success of both the agency and the bootcamp from a client perspective and from a student perspective. And that's essentially it. So let's answer some quick questions before we move on to the next slide. How do you build that community? Can we search for those specific professions? So that's the, um, that's the next slide on the aspect of how. How do you build them, right? How do you structure your online community? How do you drive traffic towards it, et cetera? On the topic of how you build them, it essentially all depends upon where your target market is, right? If you want to build a WhatsApp community of accountants, LinkedIn is the way to go. If you want to build a uh, Facebook group of people interested in blenders, for example, mass market Facebook ads are the way to go, as well as Google PPC, TikTok ads, et cetera. If you want to go the B2C route, if you want to build a group of real estate agents as well, LinkedIn is the way to go. Now, of course, anything that, you know, anything that points towards the direction of LinkedIn, the most cost effective traffic driving strategy that exists right now is hands down LinkedIn automation. But on the flip side, as per my predictions, I personally feel that you won't be able to automate on LinkedIn within the upcoming 90 to 100 days because of the restrictions that are happening right now. You see that there's limitations. You can only send, some accounts have a limitation where you can only send, pardon me, 100 connection requests per week, not per day, per week, as opposed to previously you could send 100 per day. Um, fake accounts are being blocked left and right, et cetera. So, it's, it's getting quite tricky and it's not becoming as cost effective as before, but anything to do with LinkedIn for the next 90 days, of course, the, the most recommended route. And again, from a cost effective standpoint, I, I'm just trying to state the way that I do it. If I'm trying to get the maximum results for the least budget, it's most definitely LinkedIn automation, anything B2B. On the flip side, if you have a really big Twitter account, for example, and this is one of the automations that I did yesterday. I don't have a big Twitter account, but it's slowly growing in follower base from the spaces and the clubhouse rooms that I'm running because people can basically go from clubhouse to your Twitter page and from Twitter spaces directly onto your Twitter page. Of course, it's pretty straightforward. But if you have a big uh, Twitter account, you can basically auto DM all your followers. And I mean, your followers followed you for a reason. If your profile is, for example, niche down and it's, let's say, a profile of a marketing agency, these people followed you because they like what you're doing in marketing. So it makes sense to basically do a Twitter auto DM. When I say auto DM, I mean automatic direct message, right? Through a tool like Phantom Buster saying, hey, first name, uh, thanks for following me. We've also launched a group on Facebook, for example. Feel free to join, blah, 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 so on and so forth. We'll pro we're providing a lot of value there. People will join. Uh, like as soon as they open the message, they'll, they'll be like, you know, it makes sense. This is a marketing profile. Why not join? Why not? I mean, they followed you for a reason. They, they might've liked your content. They might've liked whatever. So it makes perfect sense. Um, on the flip side as well, you also have cold email outreaches, but it, it's risky at the end of the day because they might not be perceived as, you know, organic, it might be perceived as spammy uh, and too invasive. So I generally stay away from that. But the best routes, of course, are LinkedIn, Twitter, in some cases, Facebook as well and reddit so a good content marketing strategy paired with reddit in relevant subreddits can help you boost your community really really well so let's say if you're building a, a group of accountants head into r slash accounting and write out some good copy 
when the hyperlink your actual community's group, uh, like link, the, the, the link of your WhatsApp group and drive traffic to that. Blogging as well, YouTube videos. For instance, if you check Inside Insights YouTube channel under every single YouTube video that I ever post, there's a section saying, feel free to join our growth hacking WhatsApp group. And people join because they'll watch the content. In some cases, they'll like it. And after that, they'll be like, okay, I want more of this sort. Let's join the WhatsApp group. It makes perfect sense. Now, and this is something that I'll explain later. If you pair, uh, if you pair, let's say, a YouTube video with, if you pair content with community and it's in sync, it's relevant, then you could, like, it becomes a flywheel effect because people watch your videos, they like your videos, they join your community, you then post more content in the community, they watch more videos, and the cycle goes on. So it's a flywheel effect, essentially. It's the exact same thing that Amazon has for growth because... Uh, or Airbnb had for growth or Dropbox. Dropbox is the one. Dropbox basically took advantage of a flywheel effect in order to basically grow without ad spend because people would join Dropbox back when it started. They would run out of space. Dropbox had an offer where if you invite three friends, you gain an extra three gigabytes in space. I don't know the exact numbers. People would invite more people. These people would then run out of space. As they run out of space, they would invite more people, et cetera, and it becomes a flywheel effect. It's, it essentially becomes a cycle. So if you do the exact same thing for your community, you're basically dropboxing it, quote unquote. So that's the, that's the uh, flywheel effect with regards to content and community. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. If there's anything that you know I might say that doesn't really resonate with you or it doesn't make sense, feel free to ask in the chat and I'll revert back. But how do you structure your online community? So which platform? Um, there's a lot of different community platforms right now. Of course, you have WhatsApp, you have Telegram, you have Facebook, you have Discord, you have Slack, uh, you have a bunch of different groups. What I look for whenever I choose a platform is which platform has the least desensitization. So which platform has people checking their notifications as much as possible. WhatsApp is primarily for friends, family, business colleagues, etc. You don't really join like a lot of groups, like just by accident or et cetera. Most of the groups that you might have on WhatsApp right now are with friends, family, and in some cases, business, of course, if you're using it for that sort. Um, but personally speaking, as per the research that I did, I know that WhatsApp is hyper personal. Whereas Facebook groups, you join Facebook groups left and right, right? You might join a Facebook group for uh, dog caretaking. Next day, you might join another one for B2B lead generation. The next day, you might join, you know, Integromat's Facebook group to basically learn more about, you know, how to use Integromat because you have a certain question, so on and so forth. So th there's a wide array and you won't check your notifications as much because you get notifications from Facebook groups every single hour. So when we see and when we get the same thing over and over again, we're subjected to something called desensitization, where the notification just doesn't count as much anymore. Whereas on WhatsApp, because it's friends and family, hyper-personalized, you're more likely to check, revert, engage, etc. So despite the fact that WhatsApp has a limitation of 256 members, I still feel that WhatsApp is the most hyper-personal platform at the moment to build a community on. And that's essentially why I've built not one group, but five on them. And I'm going to scale it to 10 by the upcoming 60 to 90 days, give or take. Now, Telegram as well. See, Telegram doesn't have that limitation. You can, be, you can build a Telegram channel of 10,000 people and even 100,000 people if you want to. But the problem with Telegram is Telegram is so abused by spammers, scammers, crypto, like Forex, etc., that people might install it, right? And then they're like, okay, like I'm getting a Telegram notification like every single minute, right? So sort of screw it and you might just open it once a day. Whereas WhatsApp, you get the notification, you check. Personally, that's my view. Now, Facebook on the flip side, Facebook is good, right? But in addition to the wide multitude of groups that exist on Facebook, the other problem is that Facebook's algorithm sucks. <laughs> and Facebook's algorithm sucks so that you run ads, essentially. It's like a uh, like an incentivization at the end of the day. They'll make the algorithm suck so that you look at other, you know, like what's what other availabilities do we have? And then you look at ads, et cetera. You pay for the CPM and you move from there. So essentially my best bet and like my best advice is test it out with a WhatsApp group. Of course, if you're running, a, if you're trying to build a B2C community, 
you wouldn't really, you know, be able to fit like a sizable amount of your target market into a WhatsApp group with a limitation of 256 members. In those cases, you actually need to, let's say, consider either a Telegram or a Facebook group. But if you're in B2B, WhatsApp is definitely the way to go. Now, how do you maintain your community through content? Back to the flywheel effect, essentially. If you're creating content, right, you're essentially like shortcutting the necessary engagement that you need to have with it, like with the group. Because if you build a community, you need to, of course, engage with it. You need to grow it. You need to keep it alive. You need to make sure that the conversation is flowing, post questions, answer questions, etc. But one of the best, like, and most engaging, personally engaging shortcuts that I found is create content for the community, right? And then post the content in the community first. And then, of course, optimize it for like YouTube search, et cetera. Because on the flip side, the alternative, if you're a deep tea, I got your question about Slack as well. I'll answer it super shortly. If you're a content creator, let's say you just created your first YouTube video. Second thing that you think about is where do I post the video, right? So you might go on Reddit, you might go on Facebook groups, et cetera. Distribution channels that are not your own. If you own a community though, and you create content based on the questions that you're getting within the community, right? It's essentially like a pre-filmed webinar that you're posting right there. So it's engaging. People will have questions for it. People will watch it. Your watch time will go up. Your likes will go up, etc. And then YouTube's algorithm, for example, if you're posting content on YouTube, will basically register that this content is getting viewed, right? And then it's going to promote it to its audience by its algorithm better, essentially. And this, again, creates somewhat of a flywheel effect. How do you monetize and drive traffic to your offer? So let's say uh, in the case of the Growth Hacking Bootcamp, for example, like all the people that are in Growth Hackers Inc. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. If I see a question, right, that's already answered in the bootcamp with like, let's say a video that I spent, I don't know, half an hour or one hour on to basically create. And if I know that that video answers that question, I'll tell them, look, feel free to join the Growth Hacking Bootcamp. The full layout of how to get this challenge, quote unquote, completed is all there. So, you know, why, why sort of re-answer the question from the beginning if the direct solution is in the bootcamp itself? And the bootcamp is cheap. It's 30 bucks per month, quote unquote, 40, 50. So it's, uh, it's not that much of a dent to your wallet at the end of the day, if you, know, if you have any question with regards to growth hacking. So that's, that's generally the best way. If you're running, of course, on the flip side, if you're running an agency, for example, and you want to basically drive traffic to your offer, right? You will, in some cases, have people post questions about, you know, how do I grow my business or how do I do this? Feel free to DM them because you own the community, right? And basically say, listen, we're able to help you out. Feel free to schedule a call. On the flip side, if you're looking for, you know, advice that you can execute on your own, simply do this, this and that, et cetera. So give them the free option and give them the paid option as well. That's generally like the best way that I see. Always give value first. And then if they like the value that they get, they'll then basically promote themselves to, you know, a paying client or a paying student or whatever, generally. Never be too pushy, essentially. Just provide value first, make sure that the community is engaged and that you're relevant and like business will happen from there. But essentially that's that. So as per the images, and by the way, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and I'll go over them towards the end. Um, these are essentially the groups that we've built over time. So Inc. 2, 4, 5, 3, Bootcamp Premium, and then Growth Hackers Inc. And then as per the flywheel effect as well. So this YouTube channel, right, which is pretty okay. It's not like top tier, but it's like it's doing quite well, is a direct result of these communities. So the communities allow you to build content, right? And then this content basically drives more traffic towards the communities, creating a flywheel effect again. And I know I'm repeating it, but it's just... Like it's basically one of the best aspects that you can have to your business because you have a process that's basically self-generating and self-propelling as opposed to you needing to like input more time, more adjustments, more ad spend, et cetera. It, it drives itself. I can, for instance, not create any YouTube videos for a month or two months and I'll still have people joining the community because of all the previous videos that maintain the link because YouTube does its work in the background. It's going to rank the videos. It's going to, it's going to promote it to, I don't know, it'll like rank it on YouTube search, etc. So again, flywheel effect, and it has its own effect without any input from you. So on to the next one. How do you target? Who do you target? Who do you want in your community? On the aspect of who, 
it's relatively simple. If again, accounting group, you target accountants, a uh, real estate group, you target real estate agents. Um, then what else? Uh, if you're, let's say providing lead generation for law firms, you add lawyers at the end of the day. If you're selling e com target the target market of the e-commerce brand at the end of the day of like, you know, who's more likely to buy your product, who can build communities, most definitely business to business and business to consumer businesses at the end of the day, both B2B and B2C. And the biggest reason behind it is that, of course, your buyers are human, right? And humans love communities. They love to engage. They love to watch content. They love to get questions answered. They love to network. So as long as your buyers are human, you can basically fill it up with humans and essentially build a community. Who can screw up your community? So who can fuck up your community at the end of the day? Hint, spammers, of course. So moderation is key, right? If you see that somebody has joined your community and it's sort of becoming overboard, like they're over promoting too much, feel free to DM them and say, hey, listen, we're trying to like keep the level of promotions down to a limit so that the community maintain, like basically stays organic. And you'll see me personally do this within like the Growth Hackers in groups. If somebody promotes without any admin approval or without any like... Um, if they don't ask an admin prior to any promotion, we'll basically tell them to delete. In some cases, we might remove them. In some cases, we might forgive. It's a case-by-case -case basis. But the point is, once you own your community, you control who posts what, right? Not from a censorship perspective, but what promotions go out at the end of the day, right? And you control the flow of the community as opposed to being the subject of somebody else's control at the end of the day. Because if you join another community right now, if the admin doesn't like your offer, if the admin doesn't like your promotion, if the admin feels like you're stealing business away from him, they're going to do the exact same thing to you. So the faster that you can understand that and basically build your own, right? The faster you can basically take advantage of this. On the flip side though, if you do want to, and I think I mentioned this before, but I'll just mention it again because it's, the, it, it's a pretty important strategy. If you want to promote in other people's groups, right? make sure that you have a good connection and a good relation with the admin. Because if you have a good connection and a good relation, if you've been on a couple of phone calls with the admins, et cetera, right? You have a relationship with them. They'll be like, all right, screw it. Like, you know, we've spoken to this person before. They have good intention. They have a good product, a good offer. It's no problem. But unless you have that relation and then you just start promoting left and right, it really won't work. Like I've tried all angles. I've tried the hijacking communities. I've tried the like negligence or just posting without like any connection. And then I've tried the relation. The best one that works out most of the time is the relation one because it, it'll be like downright. It'll be like, hey, by the way, we also offer this and this. I think your community could benefit greatly. I'm even willing to give you a percentage or a cut of whatever we close from your community. What do you think? In some cases, they'll, be, they'll look at your service or product and they'll be like, yeah, sure, why not? In other cases, they'll be like, I don't really feel like it's a fit, et cetera. And from there on, you know that you can move on. But most importantly, in the cases where they say like, yeah, sure, it makes sense you have a relation for six, 12, 24 months where you can basically utilize their community that they're growing as opposed to posting for a month and then getting blocked and deleted. It's, it's a much more sustainable relation at the end of the day. It becomes a business contact and it becomes a distribution channel which you can basically utilize for yourself as well. Just make sure your product and service is good. It's, it's a very simple business strategy. And uh, essentially that's that. Uh, the images that you can see right here are basically examples of how I drive traffic to the community. This is a Twitter automation we did yesterday. Basically the template here is very, very simple. Hey there. So the Twitter account, basically people follow, they know we're a marketing company, right? And we're basically reaching out saying, reaching out to person, invite you to the free growth hacking community on WhatsApp, etc. daily growth hacks, blah, blah, blah. And then positive response, the individual joined. Uh, a couple of cold email outreaches, which again are risky. I don't recommend them, but if you're interested, template is as follows. Just trying to make sure that you guys can see. Uh, hey, came across your profile today on Clubhouse. Reach out, blah, 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 et cetera. Community right here. And then the other one, uh, this is from our mailing list, essentially, because we own a mailing list of growth hackers that join our Facebook community. They input their email and then we they subscribe to our mailing list essentially. So this one is totally clean. Uh, join us here, weekly webinars, host super active growth marketing discussions. And then of course the LinkedIn automation one, which I know a lot of you would be interested in. Uh, very, very simple. So 
This is the second follow-up that I sent, and it was Mastermind 48, which was another group that I tried to start, but it never kicked off. But here's an invite, etc. blah, blah, blah. Of course, you need to include a lot more information, like we're a growth hacking community or whatever you're trying to start, and just send the link. And yeah, and the thing is, when, uh, when, you're, when you're outreaching to people with, let's say, a link to a community that you think they'd benefit from, it's classed as a value-first approach. It's not classed as a, you know, schedule a call here to basically learn more about our business, which is more invasive. It's a more take-take relation as opposed to a give-give, right? And when I say give, it's more of a, it, it's a friendly one. It's like, I've looked at your profile. I think you'd benefit from this group. I'm giving you value. So people in most cases with this type of engagement, they'd be like, uh-huh, it, it seems like, you know, he's trying to provide some value first before whatever, as opposed to, a, you know, Hey, schedule a call here. We offer digital marketing, blah, 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 blah. Our retainer is, etc. I hope you guys can see the difference with regards to the two different approaches. If you're sending a group, right? It's in most cases perceived as a value first approach. If you're sending an outreach template, value first approach. If you're sending a lead magnet or um, like, let's say a list of investors to a company that's currently looking for investment, value first approach, as opposed to a, hey, schedule a call here. That's a take approach at the end of the day. So just so that you guys can basically understand the two dynamics with regards to any outreach. Um, next one. So tips, essentially prior to the Q&A, uh, content, content, content. I think I made that pretty clear. Flywheel effect, create content for your community, share content, keep them engaged. Uh, daily engagement plus weekly webinars. So if you do start a community, of course, make sure to host a weekly webinar. That's number one, a weekly webinar for the audience. And that is as well recorded, essentially, because if it's recorded, you can then repurpose it across YouTube. You can repurpose it, do an email campaign from it, start a podcast, etc. Flywheel effect, and basically proceed from there. Uh, value above all, monetization will happen on its own. This is the most important sentence with regards to anything that you might learn today with regards to like maintaining a community. Think value first. Don't even think about monetization and it will happen later. Monetization will happen on its own because automatically if you provide value to people, they will then look for more value. And if you tell them, listen, all this is free, but if you want more, there's the growth hacking bootcamp. There's the, I don't know, grow your agency, whatever, become an accountant course, uh, or we have a service for it. They'll be like, yeah, screw it. I, I really don't mind paying because I trust this person. They're a thought leader. They know what they're talking about. I've been in their groups for a year right now. It makes perfect sense. So value, value, value. And then you barely need to think about monetization. Essentially, it will happen on its own. And everybody loves communities at the end of the day, because as I mentioned, we're humans, we like to group, we like to be in packs, et cetera. We like to relate with other people that share the same interests as us. So it makes perfect sense. So here we started the family office community essentially. And the reason as to why I included this image was because I thought that family offices are very stuck up. There's no chance that, you know, they would ever join a community on WhatsApp because they're super prof professional. They, you know, they'll, they're always in their suits, et cetera. So like stuck up at the end of the day, but I was actually proven wrong. So we did a LinkedIn outreach, an automated LinkedIn outreach to family office principals and directors, and they actually joined. We filled it up with give or take 60 different family offices worldwide, and we still maintain the group. So it's still growing on a daily basis. People are engaging, they're sharing investment opportunities, et cetera. So the point here is no matter how professional or outdated the industry is, you can still build a community of it. You can even build a community of top tier bankers worldwide at the end of the day, because why not, right? It's possible, they're still human. So uh, that's just a very important point that I'd like to share with regards to that. One of the best performing ones that I've seen so far is Dashclicks community and it's a marketing community. And what they do is they provide white label marketing services and they'll, they'll have agency owners join the Facebook group, right? Network with other agency owners and at the same time resell Dashclicks services. So they white label marketing agency services. So for instance, um, I think Robbie knows about them if he's still in the, in the call itself. It, let's say you want to sell Facebook marketing services, for example, you can either do the delivery yourself or you can white label it from another agency. That's exactly what Dashclicks does at like a lower cost, right? And then they maintain a community with webinars, content, etc., And they're killing it as far as I know, still killing it. This is Chad, I think I 
but I spoke to him like two years ago. But yeah, I was removed from this group because I try to take advantage of it because I didn't develop a relation essentially. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and Integromat. Now, the reason as to why I posted this is because SaaS plus communities equals great value at the end of the day. And that's one of the biggest things that we're seeing right now. Integromat maintains a community of 10,000 members that are all Integromat users. And they'll join there to basically overcome the learning curve faster, right? To learn how to use the tool better. So this creates a community. It creates instant trust. You're much more likely to use the service, much more likely to use the product, etc. So essentially that's that. Um, On to the Q&A section, super quick. I think that's the last slide. Yeah, it is. Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, um, all ears, I'll give it, let's say, max one minute. Uh, if there's any questions that you guys have with regards to like anything that was mentioned, uh, please feel free to ask. And essentially, um, that's about it. So Damon, how do we growth hack real estate, please, for an agency selling high ticket coaching program? Um, for an agency selling high ticket coaching program. How do we growth hack real estate? So Damon, who is your target market, right? Who are you targeting? Um, and high coaching program, how much does your program cost as well? Two questions that I need. Who are you targeting? Are you targeting real estate agents? Are you targeting real estate investors? Who are you targeting? Krishna, Slack, any tips for Slack group? One tip for Slack groups, uh, make sure that the privacy of your Slack group is on uh, no email visibility because you then have growth hackers like me joining the Slack group, extracting all the emails of the users and launching email campaigns and driving the communities elsewhere. That's the biggest Slack tip that I can give you. Um, other than that, Slack groups are good, but personally, I haven't really found a lot of Slack groups that are just you know insanely engaged because Slack is a separate application on its own, right? that you primarily use for business. It's not an application that you use for both personal relations and business relations, one-to-one at the end of the day. Because WhatsApp, you use it for friends and family, and then you might have a business group that you're in, for example, right? So it's basically, you'll, you're much more likely to check the notifications. Whereas a Slack group, it's business only. If you're not working on the weekends, you won't open Slack, etc. So the engagement rate drops drastically. So it's not really my platform of choice. Uh, Damon, agents and investors, 10K. LinkedIn automation, uh, whilst you still have the possibility. And then once LinkedIn automation dies, your cost essentially for outreaching will go up. But look into in- InMail, so LinkedIn InMail strategy, where you're going to pay for a uh, your cost per message. For $10, you'd be able to send 100 messages, essentially, to real estate agents across the U.S. And um, then on the flip side, one strategy that I'm testing out right now is lead and force plus Facebook ads, so essentially. So what it does is it collects uh, all the users from a Facebook group, creates a custom audience of them, and then you can basically run ads to them and you can expand the audience by creating a lookalike audience as well with 1%, for example. So this will then target more real estate agents. So look into that and your cost drops drastically and your CPM drops drastically as well because the ad relevance is significantly higher. So look into those two things and it's, I'll just drop it super quick in the chat, lead and force. It costs 99 bucks and just make sure you have an active business manager because mine got blocked as most business managers. Um, but yeah, so that's to answer your question. Unless there's any other questions, I'm going to cut the call. So deep T, what about Slack? Um, then you're a blast. So we got a hundred days to do everything in for LinkedIn. What's the best advice you can give to aim for each month in LinkedIn automation? Give to aim. Um, I don't know, personally. I, the only thing that I could tell you is start looking into other traffic sources now when LinkedIn automation dies because it, it, it's a lot of agencies are going to go down. Tools like Expandy as well will most likely disappear because you know their, their most important offer will no longer work. And uh, the industry will essentially just move. So uh, start identifying other low-cost traffic sources as soon as you can if you're in B2B. 
because it's going to get harder, right? And the people that have established themselves with LinkedIn automation, they'll have the capital necessary to basically explore ads. Whereas people that are just getting started and they've been focused on the wrong thing, etc., it's going to be it's going to be a little bit tricky. But the second best thing after LinkedIn automation is hands down in mails, essentially. So that's one of LinkedIn's advertising options where you can basically message people. I'm doing a test right now uh, because LinkedIn's cost per message goes up depending upon the industry that you choose. So if you choose, for example, real estate agents, you'll have a 0.25 cents per message sent, for example. On the flip side, if you choose real estate investors, it goes up to 0.45 cents per message. So they'll price you based on your audience. So I'm looking into one solution where scraping sales navigator, right? Saving the uh, saving the users as a custom audience, right? And hopefully that basically decreases the cost per message sent on InMail because you're not utilizing LinkedIn's audience, you're creating your own. So that's one of the tests that I'm running right now as I'm basically exploring more and more. But yeah, because if the cost per message sent drops, right? Essentially, it just makes more sense. But it's an assumption. It's not a fact yet. Um, Let's see. Robbie, coaching program, mini course, free trial, or paid email nurture sequence, build FB, WhatsApp group, content application, qualifying close. I seems like a pretty good flow. Then Deep T, our target audience is corporate social responsibility leaders in US, age group 3550. We're exploring WhatsApp, but basis are we understand that WhatsApp is not much in US. Actually, you'd be surprised, Deep T. Uh, if you check, uh, type in WhatsApp statistics on Google, which I typed in yesterday, and back in 2019, I think. 54% of the U.S. uses WhatsApp, so it's 50-50 as opposed to anything. I, this might not be the exact statistic, but it was a significant number which caught my attention. So you, you'd be surprised. It's 50-50 at the end of the day. And essentially, that's that. Um, if anybody has any, like, you know, if you need assistance with regards to building a community, uh, feel free to basically hop over to our website, schedule a call, etc. if you're looking for a done-for-you solution. And if you're looking for a DIY solution, feel free to join the Growth Hacking Bootcamp so that you can learn more about LinkedIn automation, Twitter automation, you name it. And of course, you know, it, like, if you if you want to stay in the free zone, you're in the groups, etc. ask, and we'll, we'll make sure to answer to basically help out with that. Jay, how do you feel about pods, lemlist, airtable? Pods, good, lemlist, good, airtable, very good, essentially, but pods are dying out. So LinkedIn engagement pods are slowly dying out because LinkedIn's key metric for which content will basically perform well is now not only the likes and comments and shares that it receives, receives, but also dwell time. So how much people, how much time people actually spend reading the post, going over the post, etc., which sort of kicked LinkedIn engagement pods in the you get it but yeah so that's that thank you very much guys if you have any questions feel free to message me on whatsapp and uh, we'll see you on the next one bye